Dark Redeemer, yes, that that's on purpose. Once the show actually begins, then you'll see. Yeah, it'll start out something like this. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 96 for Wednesday, the 28th of September, 2016. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek shit and have awesome guests on. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and in between us holding, what What are you drinking right now? That's Stacy right there. What the hell are you drinking? This is, hi, hello. <laughs> um, I am drinking um, tangerine uh, vodka and like some other concoction thing. I don't know. It's a girly drink. It's a girly drink. Okay, there you go. That's, that's, that is that's that is the answer we were looking for right there. Yeah. Kent, how are you doing, man? <laughs> how are you guys? Uh, awesome. Good. Um, Fantabulous. It's great. Ritual Misery's on. That's always a good time. And we got a wonderful guest, Stacy. That's so cool. Now, now we've been for a long time. Yes. We've kind of been wanting to come on for a while. We finally like made it work and you're here. So awesome. yeah. Yay. Um, now this is part one of a two parter though, because apparently there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a female rivalry because this show is just all that and, and some more. Um, right. th- th- oh yes! This, this is yes, part yes, one. Yes. This, this is the Stacy episode, followed immediately next week by the hot beverages episode. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you better make a good showing because she's gonna have all the rebuttal. Because that's how debate, ah, okay. that, that, that's how um, that's wait. how debates work. So, so for people <laughs> not in the loop, last weekend I went to a Diamond Club meetup in Cincinnati, and Hot Beverages, aka Emily was nice enough to host me for that and she found out that stacy was being scheduled for the show and she's like stacy's gonna be on before me i was like, <laughs> I was like well you're in the lineup but um crap like what do i say she's like no this is bullshit i'm calling stacy right now cut she- to uh 2 a.m my time <laughs> I get a text from Emily being like, hey, are you up? And and then I go and my response is, um, yes, sort of. <laughs> and, and then just no other text, just a phone call going basically that, you know, that she's mad at me that I'm going to be on the show and she's not uh, yet. Um, so, yeah. So, but anyway, I love Emily. I owe her chocolate milk and that's the end of my... Um, <laughs> I just, I don't, I'm not very good at this, apparently, this whole feud <laughs> thing, apparently. I, I'm. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> so that's the announcement for next week's guest. Emily will be here next week, and we'll see what she has to say about the whole situation. I'm going to guess she has I'm, a little I'm bit more to say. More to say about it than me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, Kent, uh, you got, uh, you got some little, little fun words being flown around, apparently. Yeah, dude. All right. So if you were paying attention last week when we were live, we didn't do an actual episode, but we did go live. Um, And actually for Bonnie's episode from two weeks ago, I was in a hotel room. Yeah. And that's because my work sent me to somewhere in the middle of Kentucky to get some work skills. Uh, I was staying in a very cheap hotel. And but, I made some observations. By your choice or by the government's choice? Government. Government, government. put me up in a cheap place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Better or worse than like a Motel 6? Well, Motel uh, 6 at least has the lights oh, on. Oh, the pause, the pause. <laughs> well, it was, it was a hotel, so it was on the inside. I, I guess that's the that's the delineation, right? Motel doors open to the I outside. recently learned that. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah, so te- uh, technically it's a hotel, but hotels it was... will typically have hourly rates where hotels will not. <laughs> right? Yeah, the I mean, hotel. If, if you want to go down that delineation path of hotel versus motel, that's I mean that the the door spacing and the rating, you know, the the hourly versus nightly rates. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So my observation because I'm I'm a social person. I I like talking to new people and just kind of. When I used to stay in nice hotels that had bars inside them, I would call them my five-minute friends because I would sit down next to somebody at the bar, and I would get to know them for five minutes. And I would try to find out as much as I could about that person in that, that well, usually it's like more like 15, but I called them my five-minute friends. So I tried to continue that in this crappy little hotel. 
to the greatest extent possible. Well, like I said, it was a really cheap place. And the clientele, I, uh, see, I hate, I hate talking bad about people, but the, I guess the standing of the clientele or the, like the social standing or the financial standing of the clientele would be mm-hmm. uh, less than like the hotels that I would call. L- less than, less than affluent. If you, affluent? affluent? Yeah, yeah. Affluent? Yeah. Affluent, we'll affluent, yeah. The, the, um, they were so, white people so rich. like, you know, maybe more than one person that didn't quite have all of their teeth. <laughs> yep. yeah. Oh, that was, yeah, that was, good. that was a common theme. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm on, I got you. I got you. We're, we're another the common track. theme. Another common theme that I observed though was casual racism. Mm. And I, I kind of noticed. Okay, that... wait. Can you explain? You said casual racism. Casual racism. Oh, uh, to... that's a new concept. Can you explain <laughs> that to me? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I will explain that fully. Uh, but I've noticed though a correlation though in uh, the like number in... the number of teeth in... and the. I'm sorry. The number of teeth and the the casualness of the racism. Is that... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes hand in hand. It's it's, it's kind of it relates to. Uh, it's like an income to racism ratio. Right. Yeah, no, that makes, I think that's actually, I think that's actually a real thing. I think that that's a, a statistical, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like this is coming out a lot more. I feel like I know, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I actually don't. You know, <laughs> you know and I hate, I hate to say it, but you know, like the more money you make, the more polite company you are typically. Right. I, I don't know. The, the more, um, the more edu- I don't think it's the amount of money. I think it's probably the education and the um, times goes hand in hand. Yeah, to education is is fairly together. Ah, I know I have lots of friends with four year degrees that are working at like fucking McDonald's and shit. But <laughs> well, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I so I'm walking so- a thin line here because I I'm, I really hate talking about. I hate saying negative things about people or generalizing about people, which. Okay. Well, like, let, let me, uh, let, let me, let me redirect a little bit then. Um, I actually visited MEO this week because I made a comment at work uh, about how you can blame everything uh, going on. Cause right now we have a, a standing joke in our office that QA likes to write us up for everything and they call yeah. it, they call it CTK program management. So basically anything that CTK touches, which is like the support function, the tools and programs and, hazardous materials and everything else it all fun, falls under my shop and my section and therefore under me so they come in there and they, they can just look at m- program management and they can look at any program they want because it's program management it's not the actual program they're looking at sure, so sure. W- when they write it up it comes against program management which is me and i was making a joke yeah the airplane crashes program a ctk program management you know revolution in the in the in the country ctk program management you know the moon blows up ctk program management yeah, you, know, you, yeah. you can just blame the whole North Carolina thing all on CTK program management. Like we fucked that up too. <laughs> of course. Well, right. apparently, that, saying that is a racist comment, and I had to go to MEO. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand we are discussing this as three Caucasian Americans of middle class and a roughly uh, coming up on middle age, like. Right, uh, at least, at least uh, me and Ken are. Stacy's a little bit younger. Speak for yourself. I'm 20. See. <laughs> Yeah, with yeah, her, like Jack, Jackie's twenty as well. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. Tw- she's twenty with her vodka. It's it's, vir- it's virgin <laughs> yeah. vodka. Yeah, yeah, it's virgin vodka. So, but <laughs> she's in she's in Italy though, right? And it's still there. Sure, yeah. Um, right. So let, let's just let it be known that racism is not okay. Not every comment is racist, but when they are, they're shitty and it shouldn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So, so to elaborate on what casual racism is, uh, just like. A normal person would say, like, yeah, there's a, a car over there in the parking lot. Just as casually as that, a, a casual racist would say, um, yeah, there's an N-word over there in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. I have a story. Um, so I briefly, um, and in a second you'll you'll understand why it was briefly, um, I dated a guy that uh, uh, we were in the car once and um, – we we came to a stoplight and it, it, the there was a woman in 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 the car uh, across from us and, and she had the right of way but she let us go and she was a black woman and 
just naturally coming out of his mouth after she did something nice for him, uh, she she basically just goes, oh, um, a, a N-word did something nice for once. I'm like, when somebody does something nice to you, that's your reaction? Really? Uh, really? That, that's, yeah. that's casual it racism. Was... <laughs> and, and I grew up, I grew up in sort of a, a, a racist town. Uh, not even sort of, it was, it was a racist <laughs> town. And, um, you know, you know, swastikas on the lockers and, and shit like that. And yeah. so, um, I, I don't, I don't deal with that kind of shit very well. I will blow up on somebody real quick. And yeah. so the fact that it was somebody that I was dating and I, and I didn't realize that they were like that. I was just, I, I walked out of the car. Like so, I told him, I told him to pull over and I just so, got out of the car. So can't, but, yeah. Yeah. can't grew up in Mulberry. <clears throat> or Mayberry, whatever the town that was. Mayberry? Yeah. They're, May the, Very the similar first, situation. Yeah. The, the yeah. first mixed race family moved there while I was there. No, that's not that's not true. No? That, the second one did. Oh. <laughs> whatever. Um, when I got there, the people called me a Mexican because I had a Spanish last name uh, and kept asking me for my green card. Meanwhile, when I grew up, wh yeah. where I grew up in California, I was seen as the outlander because I was... Um, how we how, how do how do we say this, Kent? I was white, so <laughs> right. I, I was the minority where I grew up in California. Um, so it's very interesting, different areas to live in in the country, and, and none of it's okay. So, um, yeah. Now, yeah, racism yeah, says Odaka. Yeah. Speaking, <laughs> speak, speaking of racism, <laughs> Stacy, you watched some BBC this week. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of racism. Speaking of well, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let me. A bunch of uh, highfalutin white people, uh, I guess, is what Amos is trying to imply that BBC consists of. Uh, no, actually, oh, I, was, yeah. I was referring to the fact that she was watching some uh, some Star Trek and talking about one of those one of the shows that's that's like, in my opinion, so covertly racist. Like everything is a racism issue in that show. They all look just okay, like humans, yeah, except um, they got okay, different color okay, skin. Okay, wait a second. Now, I love me some Star Trek. <laughs> Card is my man. I love him. Um, uh, I actually met Patrick Stewart once and, like, ran away with my tail between my legs because I was too scared to actually talk to him. But I met him. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so I, I actually like the whole... Here's the thing. You have to understand what time period Star Trek was being made uh, under. And first of all, it had one of the, it had the first female black lead in, that was not playing a maid or a fucking, you know, servant in a television series, mm -hmm. uh, which is huge, absolutely huge. Um, mm -hmm. The whole reason why Whoopi Goldberg wanted to be in Star Trek was because she saw that female lead role and as a black woman and and wanted to get into acting that was the reason why she wanted to get into oh, wow. acting the reason why I, she wanted yeah that's she the reason why she wanted to be in star trek so bad okay. um so yeah so so they they broke down a lot of a lot of walls it was a lot um it was it was a different world back then and so the precedent was set to talk about race and and uh and all of these, and and it wasn't just race. They actually touched on gender equality. They touched on um, sexual orientation equality. They touched on all of that stuff. And that's part of the reason why I love Star Trek so much, is because they get into all of those different things. Mm -hmm. And it's not just you know fucking um, lasers and pew 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 like <laughs> shooting at each other. Um, there's actually some context and some 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 morality to it. So I love Star Trek. But BBC needs to stop fucking playing Star Trek for like two months now. Oh my God, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Star Trek Overload. Oh, no. I love it, but God, please stop. <laughs> uh, now are, they, are they just playing the original series? Or are they playing... It's all, it's all Next Generation stuff. They played oh. the original series for like a day 
on the 50th anniversary, which I understand it's the 50th anniversary. Like, that makes sense. But a full day of the original of the original show is, you know, 48 episodes, and there was only, what, 53 original episodes recorded, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was so, real, real short. It was real yeah. short. Because it got canceled. Three seasons. Yeah. It was only yeah. three, Did you know that? The original series seasons. got canceled, and yeah, then they even... brought it back in the 90s, or yep. the late 80s. Right, with, yeah. with TNG, which was far go, superior. It was originally designed to go five years, because it was the five-year mission. Yep. Uh, yes. But they only made it to three because <laughs> yeah, they... because they had movies to make. Damn it! <laughs> because no one liked Kurt. Oh, poor Kurt. Oh yeah. man. Hey, speaking of things that uh, the, the rabbit holes that we fall down under without, with, with you know, not seeing the things we want to see. I started a little project on the internet. It's a little podcasting project. Reached out to some podcasting groups to create a one mic show with uh, perspectives, ten to fifteen minutes episodes. And getting a whole slew of different podcasters from all all areas to come in and talk about certain subjects on a regular basis, and uh, completely voluntary. You know, they can like submit when they wanted to. It's kind of like a newsing, except podcast form, right? Shout it out nice. there. I expected to get like four or five people to be kind of interested. Right now, the Slack group is sitting at like twenty three. Oh like, wow! Like my idea was way more popular than I expected it to be. So now I'm like kind of just running I, I don't know like i don't i didn't have the direction necessary for that many people i was hoping that with a small group we could kind of team up and really develop the idea finish cooking it if you will and now i've got right. like 23 people going hey when are we doing this like what's going on hey give me my shit i'm ready oh. to go let's 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 do it wow man and well, I, you intentionally, better it. I intentionally didn't even tell kent about it because i wanted it to be people i did not know i didn't want it to be a diamond club thing I didn't want it to be a, a frog pants or thing or anything else. I just wanted it to be completely random, just shoot it out there and accept all comers. And mm -hmm. holy shit! And uh, and then uh, well, uh, congratulations on being more successful than you expected. If I <laughs> now, now I have to worry about if I can pull it off. I don't mind disappointing four randos that I don't know. <laughs> Twenty people that are getting hundreds of thousands of downloads between them. Now it's a thing. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so right, uh, right. yeah, I bit off my, a little bit more than uh, than I might be able to choose. So I'm I'm kind of that's my big thing this week. That's my geeky thing of the week, really. Um, and that's kind of the big thing that I jumped into. And holy shit, like that was. I'll, I'll give you all details. I'll, I'll link to it at the end of the show. But holy crap, man, that was insane. So yeah, um, that's also, awesome. Also, I started watching Stranger Things. I got about halfway through it with the wife before we had to call it quits because. Holy shit. Now we watched like the first four episodes or whatever, and it was two o'clock in the morning. We had to get up at five to go to work. So now we're like, well, we can't watch the next one because that's an automatic four hours. We're going to be sitting there glued to the TV. Like, we don't have that much time. <laughs> right. Stacy, you've seen Stranger Things, right? I have. I saw the whole series. It's amazing. Nice. Um, uh, Odakta is actually the one that, that talked me into to watching because uh, I had watched, I watched the first episode. And right as I say that, he quit. Whatever. Um, <laughs> we stopped talking so, about racism. He was uh, out of here. So, yeah, so, uh, so um, he he had talked me into actually uh, sitting down and actually watching it because um, I had watched the first episode. I was like, I am not in the right headspace to be doing this right now. Yeah, yeah um, it's a special and so show. So I just I kind of stopped and then, but once I got past the first episode, I was hooked, and I think I watched the whole series in like. An embarrassingly short. So, <laughs> Stacy, like you don't have a life. Stacy, you're, you're only like, you're, like you were born in like 20, 2001, so you don't remember the 80s at all, right? <laughs> um, are we talking for real, or are we talking <laughs> 20 year old Stacy? Uh, actual Stacy was born in 1986, so really, um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't have uh, vivid memories of the 80s now. Yeah, uh, one of my strongest, most prolific memories in my brain is the challenger blowing up so uh but we'll talk to about things like that later which well, happens, i was here that, that i was born so Mar I don't march, march of 86 that. yeah um but th that talking about my things, dreams were crushed <laughs> Kristen mccallish she's actually got her own street in uh in our hometown of oxford indiana um speaking of things to watch the debates were on this week you guys watch those oh god damn <laughs> Yes, I'm getting such uh, good reactions from you guys did, tonight. I didn't actually tune into them, but I got enough from from my fucking Facebook feeds <laughs> so that I did. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't care. There's only one thing that I want to say about it. 
So Lucas, my my high school senior son, he had a homework assignment. He actually had two separate homework assignments for for the thing. One of them was a bingo card, where if this candidate says this thing, you cross it out. If this candidate says this, or either candidate says this, then you cross it out. And then the other thing was actually like you know, what was your what did you find to be the most interesting question? Bunch, you know, bunch of stuff like that. Uh, but on the bingo card, when Trump sniffled for about the sixth or seventh time, he decided he was going to take a tally. Every time Trump sniffled, he would tally, put a tally mark. He got up to, I think he made it to 25 before he was like, okay, this is just this is getting out of hand and I'm not doing it anymore. I like how, okay, with the whole fucking, I'm, this is what I hate about politics. And it's, it's also <laughs> what Justin loves about politics is that you we get into all these fucking side issues that have nothing to do with anything. The fact that, you know, fucking Trump sniffed a lot. Okay, he the man has a fucking cold. I don't care. Even <laughs> if he is doing loads and loads of cocaine, I don't care. I don't care. Um, but, uh, and then also with, with Hillary, with the, the fucking, doing a close up of her ear, I, what is that supposed to be? Did you see that? Where they just did a, they just did a fu- fucking close up of her ear, and it's supposed to look like there's something in her ear, like she's getting fed information. What? It's no. just a fucking ear. It's her ear. It's a reflection of the light inside her ear. That's all it is. You can see that plain as day. There's nothing. There's there's. It's not showing you anything except her. She has an ear. That's it. Is this, wow. the this is the first time I'm hearing this. This is the thing. This is the thing. People are crazy. I can't stand it. <laughs> What's it supposed to be in her ear? Is it like someone's feeding her it's in supposed to be, It's supposed to be like a little piece, like, you know, like one of the Secret Service pieces. Oh, like, like, like hey, oh, this, is, this is where you, uh, Madam Secretary, this is where you should say. No, 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 no. If, if there was anything in her ear the entire time, it was just, don't cough. Don't cough. Don't cough. Don't cough. Don't, don't yeah. blink too much. Don't let them have. Let them know you have pneumonia. Don't let them know you're gonna die. Don't cough. Right. Don't cough. Well, I, I did see a meme though that it had them on the debate stage and it had a thought bubble over Hillary that said, "Don't cough. Don't cough. Don't cough." Then there was a thought bubble over Trump's head that said, "Don't racist. Don't racist. Don't, <laughs> don't racist. racist. Don't racist." <laughs> This this uh, this election is is such a shit show, man. You got you got the the bigot and the liar and like. It's so insane. I, I it's absolutely. Uh, I'm it's so the craziest glad. election. I thought that there wouldn't be a crazier election since you know, because because Bush and Gore was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy, but like this fucking election is like I. There was a point in time. Look tame. <laughs> what's that? Say that again. It makes all of the previous ones look tame. Is, oh, absolutely. E- even the ones where they <laughs> shot each other. I mean. <laughs> Right. Yeah. There was so um uh spoiler alert, I do a podcast called Black Mirror Reflections. Um and uh and so there was this one episode um uh that was uh politically uh actually it's gonna be next week's episode, mm. um called Waldo that is a politically charged sort of ridiculous uh political debate. Um uh and and when I first watched that episode it was before Trump and we, before we knew who the presidential nominees were going to be, and it seemed ridiculous. And now that I'm rewatching it for <laughs> the second time, it seems completely fucking plausible. <laughs> and that's sad. That's really sad. Any, anytime anything is, out of Black less Mirror ridiculous than our actual reality. Anytime right, yeah. anything out of Black Mirror uh, resembles reality, there's something really, really scary because that show is amazing in that aspect. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of completely ridiculous shit, Stacy, you sent us a picture. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm gonna, yes, describe describe what's in this I, picture. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to cut to the picture now and uh, uh, tell us what's going on here. Okay, so you guys sent me a show doc, and um, and <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was the question was, what kind of ridiculous shit did you get up to this week? 
And so this is the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> so this is what I got up to this week. Um, uh, this past weekend, I hung out with a few friends of mine. And um, this is actually, uh, this. I'll, I'll skip ahead a little bit, but I'll talk a bit more about this later. This is actually my friend Reese, who I am slowly introducing to Diamond Club. And uh, him and I, he has a background in radio and um, is a stand-up comedian. And so So, we are working out uh, doing a new podcast together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be super fun. Um, But yeah, so uh, so yeah, uh, we were at our friend's house, and my friend had a Jake onesie. And so (laughs) when when you go to someone's house and you're having a good time, and they whip out a fucking onesie, you wear the onesie. Like that's what you do, right? Like that. There is no other. You this is put it on. this is where we went wrong in high school. This is why we didn't get invited back to the good parties. <laughs> we weren't right. putting the onesies on. <laughs> right. right. And now Damn I'm it. a grown up, and I can wear a fucking onesie if I want to. <laughs> That's insane. Oh man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so that was a super good time. It, yeah, yeah. It, it, it sure seems like it. Um, hey, just a quick note from our sponsor. It's not even really a sponsor. It's just a way for us to tap a few dollars once in a while. Um, Geekandgamergear.com. Geek, the letter N, gamergear.com. Cruise over there. They probably got this onesie and plenty of other Adventure Time stuff. Um, I, I don't specifically remember, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm, I'm sure Kent could, can look it up and see exactly what they have up there. Um, Use the code Ritual Misery at checkout. You get 10% off. We get a little kickback as well. Everybody's happy. You get cool shit. We get a couple cents. Go make it happen. Geekandgamergear.com. Um, speaking of making shit happen, Elon Musk yesterday put on an hour long presentation. And yes, for the record, I watched the whole thing. It's why I didn't watch a TED Talk this week because fuck TED Talks. I got so inspired by this rambling idiot on stage talking about shit that may never happen, but I was so amazed by it, and I'm ready to go. I, I'm in. Elon Musk is amazingly rich. Just where do I put my money? Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> it's, not that he's, it's not that he's amazingly rich. It's that he has a plan that makes sense. But go ahead, Ken. <laughs> no, I, okay, I want, to, I want to clarify. what Amos, what do you mean by rambling idiot? Oh, it, yeah, this was like Apple style. This was like professional. He, it was not a practice speech. He was going ad lib the entire time with his slides. It was not a a professional. This is okay. highly practiced, highly performed. It was a, a very, think- it was a very human moment. And by rambling idiot, I mean that in the complete, most and sincerest, dearest form. I enjoyed it. I thought it was an actual. Like, no shit. He was going up there and trying to hold back his excitement on how amazing the ideas sure. and the concepts were. And also, like, the man's on his, what, fifth insanely successful company? <laughs> like, and he's a fucking genius. Hey, I got and an he's idea. he's probably he- one of the smartest people of our generation. Like... And he's supposed to be a good public speaker. I think you're asking a little bit too. Much. Oh no, no, I, I, I was hoping <laughs> like if if he if he had been really practiced and like Apple like and and you know yeah. they if he had been reading off a slideshow, I'd have just been pissed. It'd be suspect, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, he, come off as disingenuous. Yeah, yeah. no, it was it, it could have been practiced the way that it was, but I don't care because he sold me. He, I'm, I'm in. What do you think, Kent? Yeah, well, okay. Just to hit real quick on what you were saying about his uh, the way that he performed his speech, uh, we were actually just talking about this earlier today. That it could either be that you know he was nervous because he was making this this hour long big presentation. It could have been like you said he wasn't practiced, and it, it, or it could be like a that's that's just how he talks. Yeah, you know, we don't. I don't know. I haven't watched. I've seen interviews with him, and he's he's just he's kind of a soft-spoken dude. Like he's not. He's not used to getting up in front of a thousand people and talking. This this was how I attributed it. This was a twelve-year-old giving a speech to all his parents and teachers and friends about how he's going to make his dream come true. Yep, 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 yep. I drew the exact same conclusion. It was amazing. And yeah. uh, like I said, I'm sold. Uh, He's look, like, guys, guys, 
guys, guys. <laughs> what was the timeline that he gave? Uh, 20, 2023 would be the earliest possible opportunity. And more likely uh, about 10 years from now, so 2026 would be the next uh, rendezvous with Mars. So we're, right. looking, we're actually looking really, really short. And the feasibility, uh, the earliest window of feasibility for having a uh, colony, a self-sustaining colony on Mars would be 40 years from now up to about 100 years from now. Okay, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to preface this question with the fact that you – are not going to likely be coming back, obviously. Um, life will start anew on this new planet. It will be hard. It will be really, really hard because we need to start a new society. And starting a new society is is not an easy task. Um, and and starting it, you know, I think he said 100 to 200 people at a time. Like, that's, that's not that many people to start a society with. Mm -hmm. um, would you go? Oh, money out of the question. Let's say you get because he mentioned in their sponsorships. <clears throat> yeah, so sponsorships. That's, like that, that is yep. a possibility. And two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's not that's not a huge amount to to raise. Get People that. raise that for charity all the time. Yeah, right. So, would you go? I would. I'm go, gonna save my answer, but you guys. Go. I would go to visit. I. I don't want to, at least at this point in my life, or like what I envision my life to be five to ten years from now, mm -hmm. I don't want to go colonize another planet. I don't <clears> want <throat> that to be what I do with the second half of my life. However, if I could go there to visit, like it's, let's say it's a five-year thing, like I'll, I'll be back on Earth in five years. Um, yeah, five to ten years from now? Yeah. Right? See, no, I'm kind of the opposite. I, if I wouldn't go by myself, <laughs> um, I, I would go if I were, if I were married and maybe had a, a child that was old enough to understand, you know, wh what we're doing and, 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 and what their life is going to be once they get there. Um, I would go with a pre-existing family. Because, you know, obviously when you when you go to a, a society where there's only 100 people, like the chances of you fucking meeting somebody are slim to none. Oh. Um, so, so, yeah, so I would definitely I would go um, with a, a family unit, if if at all, I would not go by myself because that would be that would be far too lonely. I wouldn't be able to deal with um, with just, you know, my 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 day-to-day -day life I, you know having you know been being on this this strange planet which i'm sure that there's going to be an adjustment period of just like just missing home missing when you look up and you know and seeing a different sky than what you're used to mm -hmm. um and you know a different landscape and the dirt is a different color and the sky is a different color and you know we're in a pos different position in our galaxy so the stars are all different and so it's just that that you know that constant reminder that you're not home i would want something i would want someone with me uh that would that would remind me of home or make me feel like i'm home right so, um, so how terrible would it be if you go with your pre-existing family and mm -hmm. shit don't work out like you find out the guy is a. I I feel like then I would be in the I would be in the same boat as if I had gone alone. But at least if, but at least I I made uh, the effort to be able to bring people that I that I love. And also if I have a child there, like I'm not gonna break up with my fucking kid. Like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like you'd, you'd you know, be, you'd be, you'd be a closet racist. What's that? Say that again. Even if you find out that your child is a closet racist. And who do you blame? I mean, I'm the one that <laughs> raised him, so I feel like that's highly unlikely. Okay, what okay. <laughs> you're a closet racist. <laughs> you find out you're a closet racist. Um, so, so I'm a closet racist? Well, that would be quite shocking. I'd so, probably break up with me at that point. <laughs> so, left hand, stop talking to right hand. Um, so my, my answer is kind of a bell curve. 18-year-old me would be gone in a heartbeat without a second thought. Just gone. Peace out. Yep. See ya. Yep. 
39 year old me the the one that you see in front of you now not a fucking chance not in my wildest dreams i want to see my kids grow up to have kids i want to see things ask me in another 19 years 19 years from now i'm ready to go i'm ready to go sign me up put me in the casket and send me off to space and let me stay there and live out my days growing potatoes out of my own poop. I'm okay with it then. <laughs> like, I will have lived my own life, you know? But right now, not a chance. There's not a yeah. chance between now and the next 20 years. Not going to happen. I, uh, yeah, I feel like my answer is completely opposite from yours. Again, <laughs> I, 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 well, part I of, would part bring... Of it- Part of it is that I struggle to to bring my wife to South by like I struggle to get her to come to South by. So there's no, there's no (laughs) way I'm getting her to go to Mars. (laughs) That's fine. Yeah. And that's the other thing is that, that that it needs to be a completely 110% decision between the two of you. And I don't know if I'm at 110%. I know that I, I would seriously consider it. But it, again, it's that thing of like, I'm, I'm an anxious person to begin with. Like I'm, I as boisterous and as, as loud as I am when I'm doing stuff like this, like I'm, I'm actually quite quiet and reserved in my daily life. And, um, and so, you know, that whole thing of like, I don't know if I'd be able to deal with living on another planet. Like that's, I can't even imagine what my daily life would be like. Yeah. Um, that, that is something that, that I think I, I, that, that would be my biggest reservation with, with to that. To me, it, I think it, like when I try to picture myself going to another planet and like, like you're saying, just everything is just so different and not anything like what you're used to. I just yeah. think a deployment, yep. uh, a military deployment being in a place like Iraq in a war zone on a base somewhere. Your day to day, like it is not even, not even close to what, you know, life like we're used to. It. The yeah. amount of work that it's going to take because you have to build everything, yeah. right? Everything, and you're going to be living in the fucking stone ages for a while because you're not going to have the technology that we're used to having every day because all of that shit needs to be built. And that's the other thing is that what kind of people are they going to be sending? there to start off you know i mean we need people that know how to how to do things we need people that that uh, have that are uh experienced in physical labor as well but we also need fucking engineers and and people that know how shit works i know i don't know how to set up a fucking you know you don't know how shit works (laughs) system or anything like that or an electrical system or anything like that i have no idea how any of that works so uh we need we need people you know I work customer service for God's sakes. Like that's going to be fucking useless on Mars. <laughs> so, uh, uh, speaking so, of, speaking yeah. of not knowing how shit works, Kent, you actually uh, went to visit another podcast. Uh, me? No, Kent. Me. A couple of, uh, a couple of times actually. Since we last had an episode, <laughs> I've I've been on two other podcasts. Uh, so the Diamond Club meetup that we did in Cincinnati that <clears throat> Emily hosted. Uh, well, she hosted me, and then we a- we actually went to someone else's house for the actual meetup. And Chris and Brittany, oh my God, forgetting their last name now. But anyway, <laughs> a couple of Diamond Clubbers, Chris and Brittany, we went to their house, and they and a couple other people have a beer podcast. It's called Have a Drink. And they were recording an episode of their show that night, and as part of it, because in Cincinnati they were having their uh, Oktoberfest celebration, they did a beer tasting with flights of Oktoberfest beers, and I got to participate in that tasting. And even though my name wasn't actually said on the show, I did provide some commentary for uh, you know some some tasting notes and things like that on the beers. But I was uh, I was one of like twenty people in that in that place. Uh, but it was a it was a ton of fun. Got to meet a lot of really cool people. It was a lot of fun to be on the show. Of course, the beers were great. More recently, though, just the other day, I was on Jackie Hearn's new show, What's Cooking. 
her episode one is out and available that she did with Roberto Viegas. It was a pretty cool episode. And I was honored to be the second guest on the show. So I'm hoping that comes out sometime soon. I don't know if it's going to be out this week or if it's going to be out next week. But you can catch me on that. It's called What's Cooking. It, it'll, it'll be out whenever Jackie damn well pleases. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Jackie does it when Jackie wants to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Stacy, you're uh, you're not exactly new to the podcasting world yourself. I, I was looking at the uh, the, the whole uh, oh, shit. What is it? Uh, StacyBaldwin dot com. Like you got your own little namesake, your, your uh, eponymous website and stuff. With all kinds I, of guests. I look a lot more there. professional than I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we yeah, no, no uh, I feel like that's show, the so. game in this, in this whole industry, right? You just, you just look better than you actually are. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, I started this year, actually, I started, um, and Jackie was actually the first, uh, I was on that time of the month was the first thing that I ever did. And, uh, and I kind of caught the bug there and, and just, just continued to do other things. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, so, so, so far so good. I, I love it so far. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a good time. Uh, so we, we've both been on with Jackie. We've had Jackie yes. on this show. And Jackie yes. has a show called That Time That Time of the Month or This Time of the Month. Uh, I sh- I'm going to get that right one of these days. Uh, that time of the month. It's it's <laughs> That's Time of the Month. Uh, with I, I believe, a, it's, I believe it's, it's currently it's, on hiatus. It's code for period. I'm just I'm, <laughs> like punctuation. I I got, yeah, it's code that for time punctuation. Of month, it's, it's code. It's, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. So she hosts hosts the show with Crunchy and Crunchy. Crunchy sent you this. Now, you're just giving us all kinds of fun she stuff. She didn't today. send it to me. She didn't send it to me individually. She actually has no idea what I'm talking about it. And I'm going to tell her about it. It'll be hilarious. But, um, but yeah, so, so uh, she she posted this on Facebook, and I just thought it was fucking ridiculous. And I thought I'd ask you guys if you would do the same thing. So, basically, um, <laughs> I guess this store, uh, the manager or whoever, um, uh, thought of the ingenious idea to store all of their cash, like five grand worth in a fucking uh, pizza box. And so one of the drivers, understandably, picked up the pizza box and walked out the door with it with an order and delivered it to this lady. And she opened it up and it's like $5,000 in cash. And she like worked really hard. Like she called the restaurant and said, (laughs) hey, I need to speak to your manager like ASAP because she didn't want to tell them that, you know, I, hey, I have $5,000. Do you want to come and take it from me? Because the dr- delivery guy is going to be like, uh, sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, so she called and, and the manager never called her back. So, and then so she called corporate and like. Well, well she, called I, the, she called the I, news. I, local- I would not have got. I, I will tell you right now. I am not that good of a person. I am not. She has- I would not have that. I would not have gone through all that. I would maybe would have called once and had they not called me. Guess it's it's foreseen. I'm keeping the money. <laughs> I, I, so so I, I had a few thoughts when they I read this. They don't want it. I had a few thoughts when I read this earlier. Um, one, she had to call, go to the local Fox affiliate to have them get a hold of corporate to go back down to the manager. So obviously, this Domino's is making enough money. They don't need fucking five grand, okay? Two, right? this is clearly a drug drop. I don't care what anybody says. This is this is this is totally this is totally a driver. I assume that it was just like the 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 till. This is that, no, this is Breaking Bad in 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 uh, you know this <laughs> this is just a fucked up Breaking Bad. That's a, so would I keep the money? No, because that's the only thing going through my mind. Is <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that. Maybe she's not that good of a person. She just didn't want to go to prison. And, and third, my, or shot. My my third thought More was, my, my third thought. How cold are your fucking breadsticks that you're taking out to customers that you don't know a stack <laughs> of bills from the fucking breadsticks? Like, <laughs> how are you making this much money? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that the only. <laughs> My only reservation about keeping the money would have been my paranoia of getting caught. I would have been all about keeping the money until I went to bed that night. 
and I, that's all I would think about. Like, oh shit. Yeah, but yeah, what if you didn't do anything I mean, illegal? I wouldn't Somebody have had a problem. You cash. I wouldn't have had a problem at that point because if I'd gone to bed, the money was already spent. <laughs> like, that, that, that money is not making it to morning. <laughs> Wait, so what are you spending? Wait, hold on. This uh, opened up a whole new can of worms. Five, what are you spending the money on in one night? Five G's <laughs> lands in my pocket, and that shit, I'm, I'm going to Walmart. I'm getting one of those little credit card things right off the bat. Load that uh, shit up. Okay. That's a trip to Hawaii for me and the family. We're gone. Like, that money disappeared in no time flat. Within an hour of me deciding I'm not going to spend I'm the money. Thinking was, like, hey, I'm thinking like he's getting piles of cocaine. Oh, no. He's yeah. getting drink. <laughs> he's getting like... He's no. just gonna do like the best party no, ever. No, 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 no. I'm gonna surprise the wife with the trip back home to Hawaii. You know how late I'm gonna be for that? Like that's that's like a year <laughs> investment in laidness right there. I'm good. Like <laughs> stay stay up. Oh, that, God, that, is, that is that awesome. is stay up till um, that's, yeah, probably that's, true. <laughs> that's stay up uh, late until five o'clock in the morning before you gotta go to work on an important day and still get laid that night after playing video games till five o'clock in the morning. That, that's, that's the level that's that I'm like, talking about. That's like morning blowjobs. That's, that's like, that's, that's a whole realm of laid that you, yeah, that you probably yeah. have so, experienced in a while being married. So, so if, if I'm, if I'm going to spend the money, like if, if that thought is even like registered in my brain, other than the drug dealers, if I've even halfway moved past the drug dealers, trip to Hawaii, doom, dumb. That's it. Done. <laughs> that money's gone. So, <laughs> Sorry to bust your bubble, but that shit's gone. There's no money left. <laughs> oh, hey, man. so Stacy, in the while we were looking at all this stuff, I looked up on geekandgamergear.com and they do have a line of Adventure Time products <laughs> to include a plush Adventure Time Jake. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> only $7. Geek and gamer you, here. Oh no, I want a onesie. I want to be Jake. I don't want to hold Jake. I want to be <laughs> Well, you know. I mean <laughs> When she said BJ, she was, I heard she, something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you to solve these issues off air, Stacey. We can't handle that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is a lumpy space princess beanie. I think that's the only clothing article that's in here for... Um, oh, there's actually a, there's a BMO beanie. It's, it's actually... It's less about Jake and it's more about the fucking onesie. Yeah. Like, the onesie is... Uh, have you ever... Have either of you actually ever worn a onesie before? Not in my adult life. Yeah, not, okay. in, not in my lifetime I that lived, I... I lived in one as a kid. <laughs> like, I, I, I you're would... missing out. <laughs> you are. You are. You are. It's unbelievable. It's it's amazing. It's it's you you can't help but like fucking dance. And like I just it's 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 awesome. It's amazing. Wear a onesie just once. Just do it. I don't care if you you don't have to be in front of other people. Just do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. So is is the diaper optional? Is the diaper optional? The diaper is the what? (laughs) Is the diaper optional? Oh, no. well, I mean, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, <laughs> you can Holy wear clothes shit. underneath. <laughs> you don't have to wear just the onesie. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna bring it bring it back in a little bit. I, I found something that I found was just, I thought was just amazing. I was surfing Reddit. I was doing some things. I, I was posting about the little show that I talked about earlier, trying to get drum up a little, little bit of support. Apparently, I'm pretty good at that. And uh, I came across this. Now, I'm going to share this with you guys. And I don't care what the Reddit says. I just want you to look at the Venn diagram. That's right. Right, Kent? Like, I'm not, I'm not fucking that up. Yes. Venn diagram. Yep. Venn diagram. That is, in fact, a Venn diagram. Yes. <laughs> look, look, I got kids, man. Like, the brain cells left a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I'm, so glad, I'm so glad my, my, uh, my, my password is masked right there. Um, so it's got it's got a Venn diagram for the listeners of atheism, communism, and gay culture, and so atheo, atheism plus gay culture equals destruction of morality. The communism plus gay culture equals homosexual equality. The atheism and communism equals mandatory godlessness, and where they all come together is the homo socialist church. The Homo Socialist Church. I okay. like. I'm not even sure I can. I can weigh that on my on my mind and fully understand that. 
I don't. I. What? <laughs> When this I is... clicked on this link, Amos, I, I completely glossed over the Venn diagram when I was looking, when I was researching for the show earlier. And I just, all I read was the, like the Reddit topics mm -hmm. or the, mm -hmm. whatever you call it. And I was like, what the fuck? What can he possibly have to say about this <laughs> site? that's just full of hate. <laughs> I don't... I'm, I'm done. Click X. <laughs> This I'm 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 bringing this up because this is why you do not hit the random button on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> what was it just like two or three weeks ago? You said yes, hit the random button because that's the best thing ever. <laughs> yes, I don't care. I don't care. I take back everything I ever said. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so there's that. There's your there's your uh, your your weekly dose of just there's complete retarded right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so um uh, okay stacy won't you tell tell uh tell our folks where they can find more of you they can find more of me on the twitters um i am at stacy b 23 that's s-t-a-c-y-b-e-e -E 23 or you can go to my website my website is oddly enough it's stacybaldwin.com um and uh yeah uh so i post everything that i'm doing um i try to update it as frequently as possible and uh and so yeah so if you like all my stuff um or you can always catch me in the diamond club in, uh, in the chat room usually irc.chatrealm.net yay Yay! That's what it is. All right, uh, Kent. Me and you, we finally finished it. We finally got it put together. We finally drew enough answers out of Stacy to create our Stacy lives. Yes. Yeah, so tonight <laughs> we have been playing Ritual Liberty. What? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was not warned about. I just wanted to be known. I was not warned about so, this. What so is this? All, all you're doing right now is admitting that you don't watch the show. It's okay. We don't either. So, <laughs> So we have been secretly selecting words spoken throughout the show. The words might have been answers to questions or simply just a, a word that stood out to us that we liked. And we've been plugging those words into a document that auto-filled into a story, look, look, I this, guess. This show, this show okay. is at least a little bit about geekiness. And I don't know many <laughs> people that have a stack of actual no-shit Mad Libs to, to go through with their guests. So... That makes up for not ever wearing a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> Having a stack of 40 Mad Libs just to use whenever you want. Okay, so Kent, yeah. I believe you were going to start us off on this uh, this venture through Ritual Livery. Right. All right. So I'm going to play the part of a moderator, and you are going to play two characters. Yes. Okay. Right? All right. So, all right. I am the moderator at a political debate. In uh, in in response to the to this week's events, of course, right. <laughs> Good evening, ladies, and words and candidates. Each candidate will have twenty three minutes to sniff, and twenty five seconds for rebuttal. After that time, you will not be able to build. Our first question goes to candidate number one. Describe your views on shit show reform. <laughs> I believe that the choice of a diamond clubber should be given back to the American podcasts. I say, let the people make shit work. <laughs> Candidate number two, would you like to grow potatoes with your poop? <laughs> My opponent would like you to believe that he is being racist. But in fact, we would need a hundred dollar increase in drink taxes in order to fund his plan. Once again, he is space traveling to the real pizza box. <laughs> Thank you, candidates. And now a few words from our onesies. <laughs> <laughs> I always love seeing our guests' reaction to these things because they don't see them being built or anything else. It's completely <laughs> secret and private just between me and Kent. I fucking love it. So there you go. Oh, that is this so week's good. ritual livery. Yeah, this is, the, I think, the what fourth, fifth time we've yeah. done it. It's a fairly new bit that we've done, but it has been so successful. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking awesome. That Every is yes, that's awesome. It's reacted basically the same as you. <laughs> hey, this is wonderful. And none of them listen to the show, so none of them know what's actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 
but I'm not because a man too is better. <laughs> All right, man. We uh, we have got some people to thank, man. We've got some patrons. We have added some patrons recently. So awesome. A dollar a show. Even if you cap it off at one dollar, we don't give a fuck. It looks good on the page. Make it happen. Thank you so much. Those first of the month is next week, right? So next week we're actually going to start naming off our patrons. So get in get in on that shit now so you can uh, have your name blasted out on this podcast that uh, like five people listen to. Which is awesome because we have ten patrons. Whatever. So, uh, Kent, man, where can we be? Where can people find more about you? At rm underscore del noche on Twitter. You never know what I am gonna put there. So go follow me. Check it out. If you're a beer person like me, go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche, and you can read my 500 plus reviews. Uh, please tell me you're gonna put shit like this on your on your Twitter, man. Like we gotta have some shit like this on Twitter. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I might retweet or comment on. <laughs> hey, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. That's pretty much the only uh, the only social media thing that I have time for because this show right here sucks up everything that I have. Dark Redeemer just threw a link in the in the uh, chat room. Appreciate that so much, Dark Redeemer. Um, you can follow this show. You can get more information about this show, other shows we're doing, projects that we have public re- publicly released, because we're both working on, on side shit all the time. You can even buy t-shirts and everything else, ritualmisery.com. You can go to ritualmisery.com slash swag and, and look at all of our cool t-shirts. We still have the stuff on there from, from Austin, uh, about all the anal stuff that we did there. And, uh, of course, we're still in beta, so you can still get that shirt. Limited time only. <laughs> I think Ken just lost it. (laughs) I was just showing the back of the shirt. (laughs) Sure. Still in beta. Oh, okay, my gosh. All right, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas on a subreddit, our uh, uh, underused subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Uh, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music for both the intro and the outro. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for Stacy, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> And that is a show, ladies and gentlemen, coming in 57 minutes. Like, it's a miracle we made the time. Awesome. Welcome to the post <laughs> show. Holy crap. Stacey, thank you so that much. That was fun. <laughs> Can we do it all over again? <laughs>